getting my measurements, I measure the angle of the, the roof in, com in comparison to the back pan. Then I measure the heights of the return up the wall. And I'll measure the length of the entire flashing plus what I need for the return and the width that goes up the wall plus the seam. Forming this crease is quite easy, but it must have a sloping angle to it, which is why I leave it loose and crease it at this stage of the process because I get full control as to how much slope I can give it. If we didn't do it this way, the back pan would just drain straight across. Uh, it's nice to have a little wooden dolly here to really dolly that corner in. Um, turned out really nice. I was really happy with it. Okay, hop into the bench. Just transferring all the measurements here. This is really simple layout, guys. The width of this panel with a, a 90 degree return going up the wall and then just my my seam detail on the opposite side. You'd be surprised how simplistic these bends are. The prep work and trims are very basic most of the time. And the bends are very straightforward. The measuring in and of itself, as long as you know where and what to measure. Again, for this part of the chimney restoration is actually quite straightforward you can see here that when I'm bending I'm just using a portable brake uh, very easy to bend this 20 ounce copper even if you had steel going here it wouldn't be that bad the the actual trims themselves are not even 10 feet long so bending them is even easier um, I, I use the brake to scribe a straight edge. It's a little hack for anyone out there that can hold a piece and draw a straight line. Here I'm just using a pair of pelicans to, to cut it off. If you're interested in any of the tools that I use, I'll put in the description downloadable tool list of everything that I own and some essential must-haves for performing these kinds of details. Okay, here I'm just creating the seam on the one side. Crushing it over with the portable brake, using the, the bending leaf to crush. As uh, any of you portable brake guys know out there, that's how you crush on a portable brake. And finally, I'm gonna line it up to put my 90 degree wall flange bend in. This panel is my chimney side panel. So what I'm working on right now is connecting this top corner to the back pan. And how we, we do that is with a with a sweeping de a sweep detail coming off of here, and I'll show you how we do that. Here I'm using the back pan and the step-off method to get my miter line on the top edge of this. You notice how much material is sticking off the edge. That is because I have allowed enough material to return. And that is something to consider when you're measuring the length of this, uh, of this panel. I'll always keep in mind that that flange that's returning up that must be accounted for needs to match the height of the back pan. So keep that in mind. I'm just I flattened out the seam here and now I'm starting the folding process for the sweep, the, uh, the bisected uh, pocket fold detail here, which is how we create our, our upstand without notches. Um, everything you see on this chimney is notchless and folded details. Um, I adjust with my needle nose like you just saw there. and. It fits in quite nice. I get it into place, making sure everything is exactly where I need it to be before I clamp. Um, I just I make sure all my creases are sitting exactly where I want them. 
making sure that this is all where it's seated. I like the I like where it's sitting. No, that's it. It's sitting where I'd like it to. This line is in line with the back pan crease in there. So we're in good shape here. You can see the flange angle compared to the pan is 90 degrees. And once I have that at 90 degrees and where I like it, I hammer that pocket flat to lock it at that angle. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna measure Basically, a male standing, one inch male standing seam allowance here and up here. I want to taper it to nothing up here. It's going to be giving it kind of like a half inch standing seam instead of a one inch standing seam, if you can kind of picture that. Because that half inch, I'll, I'll be able to flatten it and crush it down easier against the wall. So I'm just going to put a little half inch mark for my up stand and then the allowance for my male turn I do three eighths same as over here this end over here I'm gonna just do this the the normal one inch over here and then a, a, a three eighths return you can transfer that over gonna freehand it so I'd like to come down straight a bit so I can peen that over and my counter flashings can sit nicely and then I'll start to turn my radius <laughs> so again I have my 3 8 plus my my seam height plus my turn which is one inch and then three eighths uh, and then up here I, sh I shrink the height of my seam so I can turn it flat Just trying to stay on that line and keep it nice and smooth. It's a nice cut. No burrs because that could start it. That could start a tear, especially when we're doing these double folds. You got to be careful about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a relief cut in here, going down about three eighths of an inch. Much. Gonna scribe a line on the back pan. And then I'm gonna put three eighths allowance here. And now I'm gonna draw in a three eighths proud line. Thank you. 
take the beak of our snips and run it down the make that nice and smooth. Next step in the process here is we're just going to be turning over that line. There is a line in there that I scribed earlier and I can see it. I just go along that line and give this a, a bend over crease it all the way along this hammer right here there's a, a vertical side and horizontal side and it's got a radius face on it and I take that I take that to the to that front edge to this that line um, the cut edge just and it stretches it a little, little bit I imagine with painted product it might not be too bad because these faces are really really soft um, so give it a try Especially through here, you want to stretch that front edge a little bit, and this this stretches things a little bit. Here, it doesn't really don't need to stretch it that much. on the big side but so we have that turned over you can see some of those marks there that's that's the metal stretching all I want to do now is I'm going to try and turning this over now making sure it goes over all the layers of the metal Just think with this with this technique think of you're not necessarily bending it you're more trying to roll that edge around on top of that raw edge from this piece so you're basically wrapping over the edge instead of how we normally think about these things where we make a line and we bend on the line this is more like we're shaping the metal over the edge and rolling. Okay, so we have that first lock. Now we're gonna turn the second lock. So just grab these guys again. So all we're doing is I wanna grab, here's that front edge. I don't wanna grab past it. I wanna grab before it. So right here, we got that fold over. I'm gonna grab, I have these, these are these are nice. You can use uh, these as well. They're bigger piccolo benders. The idea though is a narrow head. Something like this isn't gonna work because they're too bulky. They're, you don't get a lot of power. You don't get enough power with these. And they're too big for this curve and it's, you're, you're bending too much at once in order for it to be it for you to have a successful bend so you take these and you just bend a little at a time i start in the middle give it a crease and i'm just grabbing in front of that raw edge i'm not grabbing over it and i'm letting that leading cut edge make its own bend in the metal but I'm squeezing and bending just in front of that line, that, that finished raw edge. Okay. And, oh, 
the only process. Okay, so what I want to do at this point, I don't want to bend anymore. I want to take my my hammer and start dressing this over. Brace the back side with my anvil. So brace the back. Before going any further, I want to make sure that my first fold is staying closed because hammering on this you can open it up so I want to make sure I'm staying closed where I'm hitting I'm hitting along this spline here I'm not smashing this over I'm kind of painting this edge and curling it over curling and rolling is kind of pattern you're starting to notice. So we'll just finish things off in this top corner. There you go. Sweep seam coming off the back panel. That's how you connect the side panel to a back panel. Want to turn this, the tail of this seam, uh, sweep seam, flat so we can turn this up, or so you you guys can turn up whatever connection you need to. Okay, so I just give this a little crease here, just to kind of tell the seam where to start bending for us and then I'm going to flatten this down that as much as possible and let the, the hammer do most of the work here get my seaming my, my seaming hammer Now the water has a place to drain. We flatten that seam down and the water off the back of the chimney just drains out here. And we can seam this roof to the existing roof again and sew it all together. Here I pre-made these little uh, front connection pieces to wrap around the face of the chimney to the existing front panels again I use the same pocket form detail and pretty much the same approach on this sweep seam it becomes pretty second nature I will say over my uh, very short time uh, performing these details and, and getting really into double fold um, what I have noticed is you know, your interpretation of seams and your 3D thinking um, expands to include for, you know, bisect folds and how your creases go and, you know, over time just becomes second nature. So, guys, give this stuff some time. Practice it. It gets a lot easier with practice, like anything. One other thing I'd like to mention is if you are a business who wants to promote themselves and at the same time help support our efforts here at ASM 101, we do offer packages uh, and, and marketing uh, opportunities and ad spots within our videos. And you would not only be helping support our channel, but also helping give back to the industry that is in such dire need of this kind of education if you're interested please hit me up in either the comments or you can hunt our email down in the about page on 
our home page. Um, but getting back to this, um, I used the pinch seam kind of approach to connecting to the existing roof here. Again, it's a single fold standing seam. I did my best to create a connection that is, you know, worthwhile putting my name on. But, you know, they connected nice. Everything turned out well. I didn't really want to disturb the original roof design you know, just in case you know I get some a backlash from uh, either the builder or the client where things just started to look really different I have to maintain their aesthetic I mean these people they I'm sure had a vision for their home so I didn't really want to go far outside of those boundaries but at the same time, improving a little bit on what I came in contact with and, and put my mark on. So, um, like you saw there, I closed the top of the seam off with a 45 uh, crush. And uh, here, I'm just marking in my, my lines, much like I did uh, when we were connecting to the back pan. It's very similar approach. You can just see that I'm, I'm, I'm freehanding my lines in, you know, keeping in mind that 3 8 allowance for the double fold turn and you know I'm cutting everything in place I, I don't really you know taking things apart and cutting them you can do it but I mean hey if if it's installed and uh, it's sitting where it's going to live for for the rest of his days you know why why move it if you don't have to so that's why I, I do tend to pref I prefer to struggle a bit in getting that cut in Instead of taking everything apart, it still works. Um, I am able to connect the things and everything works great. So um, here, um, I'm just, again, same approach, connecting everything. Guys, if um, you really enjoy these videos, I really uh, ask that you drop a like and maybe a comment down below letting me know what kind of light bulbs went off for you and looking at these details and maybe some of the struggles that you've had in your business with you know shoddy workmanship that you've seen around and uh, maybe some ideas of how we could make our trade better again but also um, subscribe to the channel we're doing uh, this kind of content all the time not just tutorial content but I'm doing tool reviews too um, there's a bunch of stuff on the channel. We do live streams of workshops and we do these details where you guys can actually comment live and I can see your um, questions in, in real time and answer them and we can actually go over the detail um, right in real time. So it's actually really cool. I have, uh, I have some pretty cool software that allows uh, me to do that. So um, yeah, by, by all means, Put your stuff down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And um, really just help uh, as much as humanly possible our industry become um, what it's truly meant to be. And it's a craft. What we do here is it's artisanship. Like this is not just your average, you know, screw down metal roof. I mean, this stuff we're doing here in this video and on our channel um, it's really high quality, high end custom work and something you can be really proud of um, to look back and, and see what you've done and and um, really just, you know, increase your skill level and craftsmanship to, you know, places that it's really never been before. That's the feeling I get when I perform these details. I feel really proud of what it is I'm doing. I also feel good about it because these details make a lot of sense right we're turning the panel itself up the wall we're not uh, ending the panel at the termination and trimming things out and then caulking z-bar and blah 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 we're actually turning returning up the roof panel up the side of these penetrations so there's really no way for water to, to get in anywhere and uh, yeah so um, on screen, I have put a link. This is, uh, unfortunately, we've come to the end of this series. I, I, I appreciate everyone chiming in. It's been really great. Um, but on screen, I'll put a link to the playlist where you can go back and watch right from the beginning. 
and uh, thanks for watching everyone and uh, I really appreciate everyone's support um, oh yes and those are lead shank so don't don't be jumping into the comments going oh my god he's using no no I put lead plugs in there and um, everything is good to go so no worries there all right y'all thanks for watching see you in the next one